I, uh, I've never done this before, and I'd like to uh, start off with um, a little cleansing ha. <laughs> Can we all do that right now? Ha. 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 Does that feel better? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly laughter has done that for me, as it makes me feel better. Um, I just, uh, these amazing, courageous stories that I heard, I was just, uh, I was sitting here uh, just thinking about reflecting, as we all do, we reflect on our own lives, and I, I just thought to myself, here I am, at soul-centered, and uh, in beautiful Ojai, this is so beautiful, I, I grew up in Philadelphia, and um, it's a little different, I'm meeting people that own health food restaurants, and you know, there it's like, yeah, I ate a cheesesteak, uh, I, I had scrapple. I think called scrapple. It's a breakfast meat. <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't trust it. And where well, there were crap sitting right now, it's one mile away from scrap pile, which is a little close, which is what it is, by the way. And I want to offend everyone here, all the healthy people in Ohio, but that's what we ate. And Soul Center reminds me of my name. Everyone made fun of my name, Shoemaker, when I was a kid. My first joke, actually, that I ever told in third grade. Uh, I'd say, you know, I have a shoe factory and it burned down, and some big heel started it, and a lot of souls were lost. And, uh, that was my first joke. And, uh, it, it, trust me, it's not in my material anymore. But, uh, I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Philadelphia, and my my dad left when I was born. Uh, something I said. Wham. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was raised in a house with all females. And that might sound good to some of you, but it wasn't very pleasant for me. Her shade was with something called an epa lady. And, uh, and I, uh, my mom, for Halloween, every year dressed me as a girl. I was, I'm not kidding you. I was a prostitute, a go-go girl with go-go boots, and she'd make me do the dance for people for my little treat. Uh, or a trick or whatever it was. I, well, that was the prostitute. But anyway, uh, and I... Um, my friends are ghosts in a sheet, running house to house, getting candy. I'm a geisha girl with clogs and chopsticks in my head. Wait up! And I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. But humor, humor was very important in my life. And um, it all started, we'd all sit around TV, watch TV, and laugh. And I remember my mom, a very sad person, a very, you know, like a victim. She was a victim of my father leaving and, and not paying child support. And um, I remember us bonding, and that was the first moment of, of clarity in my life is how important this was to have this, is to have this laughter. We watched Hollywood Squares together. And, and there was a center square named Paul Lynn. He was Uncle Arthur on Bewitched. And, um, and I actually, my mom would laugh at him, and she read in Parade Magazine, he was a confirmed bachelor. So I wrote him a letter to fix him up with my mother. <laughs> I forgot, and, I, and I put her photo in there, and I said, you should meet my mom. I thought he'd be my dad. <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't know why he was saying, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the ascot might have been a giveaway, but. <laughs> I'm on Hollywood Squares and said, Paul, how many balls in a billiard table? I don't know how many guys are playing. <laughs> he never wrote me back. <laughs> but I, I, I had these dreams when I was a kid, and I, I really wanted a dad. I, I just want, that's what was one of my goals, is to have a father. And I, I always reflect back, I, th I feel bad for my mom. She'd have to date a guy and one date, and I'd go, you could be my dad. <laughs> No wonder she never remarried, but uh, she remarried eventually when I was out of the house. And I still wanted a father, and I also wanted somebody, you know, to love me. Uh, and that was a, a real goal that I had. It sounds strange, but uh, my mom didn't love me, and, and, you know, and my father, you know, none of them ever said, I love you. And as a matter of fact, I, my mom sent me this stack of birthday cards from when I was a kid. And I discovered this card in there, and I, I, and I just remember, it says, for a fine son's birthday... And, you know, and it's and it's you know it's all these great sentiments in here, and I realized I remember I actually bought this card for myself when I was seven years old because it says you're a wonderful son and I forged dad in my little kid writing. Well, you can go oh I laughed. <laughs> I laugh when I've discovered this because I remember I remember you know doing this. I remember actually going out and seeking a father and seeking a, a father's love through these different methods, and and. It didn't turn out well. I mean, I was, you know, one time I befriended this guy, or he befriended me, and he took me away and he kidnapped me. Mm -hmm. And he was a serial pedophile. Uh -huh. 
Um, and it was the worst weekend of my life in Washington, <clears throat> D.C. And, and yet, nothing will ever take me down. There is no, there is no, nothing, no circumstances will ever stop me from my mission of spreading laughter throughout the world because I have seen it so often of how it breaks the mood, how, how, you know, there's nothing, there's no obstacle that's too far for me to live this dream of, of sharing my joy and my laughter with other people and my story. My story can get dark and sad. You can say, ah, oh, you know, I've, I was arrested when I was 13, and I'll never forget the cop says, how would you like to end up like one of these guys on a poster? I'm going, at least he's wanted. <laughs> I, was, you know, I don't want to give up that childhood, you know, that, that little child spark that I still have in me. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to get into this space of, you know, oh, that's sad, and that's not, and that's happy, and that's, you know, there is no division for me. To me, we're all connected through, through laughter and joy and happiness. You know, we're the, only, we're the only species that can really laugh. You know, laughing hyenas don't really laugh. I don't know if anyone knew that. They're actually kind of pissed. <laughs> so they're the opposite of laughing. We're the only species of laughter. I don't understand why we don't do it more. And how, how it makes us feel wonderful. And by the way, do you believe this? I, you took my whole story. My father is now a cult leader. I swear to God, I'm sitting there going, she took my bit. <laughs> Because I was obsessing on what to say. I have notes and everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, my father runs mule rides in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania to feed the cult, and he calls it his harem of women. And uh, he sleeps with a different one each night, whoever wins the award for that day. And, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I remember one time I went up, I was performing in the Poconos. He calls himself the king of the Poconos. I'm the king of the Poconos. To get over that comedy, you can be part of my empire. I go, what, am I going to be Prince of the Poconos? <laughs> There's a bowl. <laughs> By the way, he's saying this. And I'm performing in the Poconos. My name's in lights, and he's going, get over that comedy phase you're in. <laughs> My 30-year phase. <laughs> but you know, I, I choose to laugh at it. I choose to laugh with him. I'm still in touch with my father. You know, I'm still in touch with Well, my mother hasn't spoken to me in a few years because I didn't, fo I didn't follow the script. And that's a big key that I want to talk about tonight, is following a script. We're all handed one. We're all handed several, by society, by our parents, by peers. And we don't have to listen to the director. We don't have to listen to the writer. I've taken so many of these scripts of the way things are supposed to be, and I threw them away. And from that, I have so much freedom and so much happiness. I've never been happier in my life. I now get to be the father that I always wanted. I have three sons, and they're most beautiful treasured the treasures of my life and my wife. I am so profoundly in love with my wife and in every single moment of every single day. I can't even do comedy about her. It kind of pisses me off. <laughs> I can't. I can't because it, it, there's just not that angst and that terror. My ex-wife, that's a different story. <laughs> I still have lots about her in my comedy act. Because I read that script too and I married someone who was just like my mother. I married someone who would appeal to my mother. She didn't appeal to me instinctually. I married someone that I knew my mother would be happy with. She had the background, she had the looks, she had the, you know, they kept the right home, and she did everything right, the way it was supposed to be. But it wasn't right for me. You know what's right for me is to find joy, and to find happiness. We're supposed to be in a society that's pursuing happiness. And I always think that to myself. It's, we're not really pursuing it that much. I mean, you look at the news. Look at the news. People watch the news. I'm on a news fast for 10 years, and I have never felt better. Because we're ingesting. We ingest this stuff. It's toxic. It is toxic what we ingest out there in the world. So why not surround ourselves with more laughter? Why not go to more comedy clubs? I'll be, I'll be uh, April 28th in Agora, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> I started a podcast, webcast, radio show. And I had Nikki and Willis, who was my first guest from, from Elevate. And uh, we're now uh, going to uh, bring Laughter Heels over and make it Elevate Laughter. Which, what, the, what does elevate you more than, than a laugh? I can't tell you the amount of experiences I have of, of transformations that have literally taken place. I've had people come up after the show. I remember I was in Brea, and these people were laughing, not when everyone else was. I said, what's going on? I said, we're here celebrating. Our daughter had leukemia, and she listened to your CD when she was in the hospital. And now we're here because she's in remission. We're celebrating. Wow. I've had people come up to me and say, you know, we were told we couldn't have a child. And 
we saw your show, and we, <laughs> afterwards, somebody, one was conceived in the Ontario Mills Mall parking lot. Shows. Honestly, God, they have a photo, they sent it to me. Like, oh, that's wonderful. I, I really understand now how powerful it is. But we watch the news, and it's that thing that comes across the screen, that crawl. Here's what will scare you today. <laughs> and I thought of the irony is, they get you depressed, and then they have the, the drug company that spots the news that handles the depression they just gave you. <laughs> what a strange paradigm. But there's no laughter lobby in Washington, because we don't have the money. <laughs> you know, there's no money behind laughter, because there's not a big profit in it. But that's, that's became my mission. One of my best friends got brain cancer. 10 years ago, and he was, they gave him three weeks to live. And that's the day that, that's the day that I said, that's, you know, that was my moment, my ha-ha moment. When I said to myself, you know what I'm going to do for him? I'm going to form the Laughter Heals Foundation. And, and I work in a cancer facility, and I developed a pilot program. And uh, it's all about the healing powers of laughter. I'd like to do something with you, as a matter of fact, something we created there called, I, I was, Many years ago, introduced to meditation. I know here in the dome, you all have been. <laughs> but again, this isn't what I come from. This isn't what it, it was a real struggle for me to meditate. So I came up with something called the guided lapidation, and it's very active. You know, meditation is not active. As a matter of fact, I have a hard time being still, and uh, I actually have to have a notepad next to me when I meditate because I go, oh, an idea is going to go away. I got to write it down. <laughs> So I came up with this guy that left the I'd like you to do it with me with your permission. And, um, and we'll see what it does to the room. Um, uh, let's start off with a, a breath through our nose. And we breathe out, let out a ha. Ah. Just think about how, how beautiful that word is. Let's try it again. And ha. Ah. You realize what a spiritual word that is. Amen. Ah, ha, ha, Krishna, Buddha, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it feels really good. It's, you just start to feel good. I know there's some smiles in the room. Let's just smile. Let's just chuckle. Let's just chuckle together. By the way, you need no reason except for just making the choice. Just make the choice of laugh. You don't need a joke. It's also formed because Pat Adams, you know, he, it's a wonderful thing that he does, but he goes to people's hospitals. If comedy is subjective, he comes with a clown nose. I would rip the cords out. <laughs> that doesn't make me laugh. <laughs> a clown shows up when I'm dying? I better die. <laughs> it's not my thing, a guy with, you know, fake shoes. It's not doing it for me. God bless him, he does wonderful work. But it's the, I, that's the day I said, guided and lapidation, that's the way to go. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to increase the chuckle and watch how contagious laughter is. I, I'm going to guide you through it. Here we go. So now we just start laughing. <laughs> so you just fake it till you make it. <laughs> just start laughing. <laughs> and you think about how stupid you look. <laughs> and all the messages are screaming. <laughs> You look like an idiot! <laughs> Ooh, you laugh like a fool! <laughs> Wipe that smile off your face! <laughs> what a message! <laughs> so now increase the laughter just a little bit. Look around you, everybody looks like an idiot. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't pay for this shit! <laughs>
just voice the truth like you were saying. Just voice the truth, just let it out. And it becomes, it becomes meaningless. It just becomes, it's not so heavy. You know, you know I was kidnapped, molested. My, my ex-wife keeps accusing me of these horrible things. But life is just life, and it just keeps going. You know, and, and it's, it, we, we don't have to make it so big. That's what I try to teach my kids. I tell them bedtime stories. I don't read them books, you know, Dr. Seuss, would you, would you, with a spoon and all. <laughs> I tell them real stories about what I was like as a kid growing up in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, the stories don't end in happily ever after. <laughs> they usually end in, and then the cops came. <laughs> they get that. They get that. We all find the funny, no matter what we do. We start our day with a gratitude list, and we go around what we're grateful for. And we end our day with talking about what made you laugh today, what was fun. So that's what I want to encourage people to do, is find laughter in your life. It's so important, but we just don't put enough into that, into finding where that humor is. I, I broke down laugh as love, acceptance, understanding, gratitude, and a whole lot of humility. <laughs> because it takes some humility. That's all comedy is, it's a connection. It's a connection, we, we just re we realize how humble it's all about the big G. <laughs> you know, it's not about us anyway. Just get rid of the ego, get rid of all those old scripts. Just enjoy your life. And I'll tell you, it's so much more rewarding and so much rich, so much richer to do this. I'll tell you, I'm just so happy to be here tonight. I hope I added a little levity to your night. And uh, thank you so much.